talking about it. I have given you certain points, why we need to rejoice and what Bible uh, talk to us about it uh, in the midst of the trial, in the midst of struggles, in the midst of this tough times, in the midst of uh, challenges we face in our day-to-day -day life and the problems that we have. And Bible is encouraging us to rejoice. When Paul is writing this letter, he's writing from a Roman jail. He was not in a very favorable uh, circumstances. He was not a happy man. Uh, nobody is happy when they are in jail. And this man was in jail and he was being persecuted. He was tortured. His circumstances was not in his favor, but then still is writing that rejoice. And again, I say rejoice in the Lord. That's very, very important. We need to understand this morning. So what I was saying is rejoicing is just not a kind of an action, but it's a spirit in our life that we maintain. So I was talking to you about the difference between happiness and rejoice, happiness and joy. Happiness is dependent upon the outer world, upon the situation that is happening in your life. Maybe your office is not okay. Maybe your manager is not right with you. Maybe your mom is scolding you. Your father not understanding you. Your sibling is not behaving right with you. So whenever you see happiness, it is always dependent upon the situation that you're going through. It is always dependent upon what we are going through, what we're experiencing in our life every day. So uh, if I talk about, are you happy today? You may not be happy, but you are here in the house of the Lord because you're rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, if I say, are you really happy today? You say, no, I'm not happy. There are things that is not right with me, but I know that God is with me and I am here because I rejoice in the Lord. That's the spirit we carry. And I'm here, I have a hope, I have a future, I love God and I know God is going to do it for me. So that is what rejoice means. You come to church, you pray, you love God, you read the word of God and you, uh, you're listening to the word of God right now. It's because you have that spirit somewhere that rejoicing spirit is telling you don't worry everything is gonna be all right God is working for you and in the days to come you're going to see God's hand upon you you're going to see God's goodness in your life you're going to see how God is going to change everything in your life so that's very important for us to understand how important to have this spirit of rejoice because that will push you that will take you up that will give you a kind of a push so that you can be happy you can be rejoicing even in the midst of the trials even in the midst of the situation when things are not going right with you so that's very important people of god and then i was i was giving you a few points quite a few points why we need to be rejoicing in the lord and why 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 and how it happens so once again happiness dependent upon people and situation if people are right with me i'm happy if my husband is okay with me i'm happy if he's not right with me i'm not happy if people behave right with me i'm happy but if people are not right in office in at uh, at home and even in, in in my neighborhood or my relatives so happiness is more dependent upon the people and upon the situation but whereas rejoice is always dependent upon the spirit that you are carrying, upon the love that you have for the Lord, upon, uh, upon uh, the life you're living with the Lord. And that's what we see in the life of Paul. That's what is happening in the life of all the apostles. You see, all these apostles, you see what is common in them. They left their house, they left their profession, they left their jobs, they left their families, they left their relatives, and they took the cross and walking walking with the lord they were walking for the ministry and they had no kind they, they had no happiness why would they be happy what was the reason of happiness no family no relatives no friends they're working day and night for the salvation of others they're preaching the word of god and they are praying for others but they are filled they were filled with the joy that joy is giving them a push to pray for people that joy is taking them to the journey in the missionary journey that joy is helping them to pray for others is helping them to preach the word of god non-stop is helping them to travel for the Lord non-stop some people they are travelers these days uh, you know I see bloggers they write their blogs and I see people on Instagram I see people on Facebook I see people youtubers are there they travel the whole world and they post their pictures they get review they get paid by this uh, uh, media platforms uh, Instagram and YouTube but these people were not in a journey where they were happy and they were posting the pictures and they were getting some reviews and some money no they were on a non-stop journey every 
every day paul had three missionaries journey and this journey was was not for his happiness but this journey was for the people that god asked him to save for the for the ministry for the work of the lord so even in his in his letters he's writing that in my in my journey i was tortured i was persecuted i was left behind i had no food uh, i had shipwreck but then still god gave me the strength to walk because i have that still i have that spirit of rejoice what i want to tell you people of god i don't know what you're going through in life maybe you have a tough situation in your house your father don't understand your mother don't know who you what you're going through sometimes your people don't know sometimes your wife don't know what pressure you have from your office but i want to tell you the good news is you can still be rejoicing in the lord you can still pray you can still come to church you can still listen the word of god you can still have hope you can hold on to jesus and you will have this uh, 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 life beautiful life with the lord and you have this assurance that god is working for me and i am protected i am sustained god is there to care for me no matter what is going against me no matter what i'm going through but god is there always to help me amen amen are you here amen hallelujah i hope you're understanding so i'll just repeat that once again and go further i'm not going to explain it today because i have already explained two times number one reason of rejoicing is our salvation so why i have to rejoice because i'm a saved person i was a sinner once but i am saved now i was i was a sinner but now i'm a child of god i am different i am unique i am saved and jesus paid the price so what is the biggest reason of my joy my biggest reason of joy and rejoice is i am a saved person i am not like others in my office i'm not like others in my relative but i'm a saved person and god has saved me and it's my job now to preach the gospel to those people those who are enjoying life those who are dependent on happiness and let them know why i not having that happiness that is dependent upon the situation and upon the people but i am having the kind of a joy in my life and the joy does not depend upon the outer expression come on somebody are you listening now number 2 i will rejoice because my god is a sovereign god so god is in control of everything that's what we need to understand our god is a sovereign god shadrach meshach and abednego they had a biggest challenge in front of them king nebuchadnezzar said hey you guys going to bow, bow down before my idol or am i'm going to put you in the furnace the furnace was increased seven times hotter than what it was and these people were so dedicated and committed to god you see if the circumstances was very much against them the fire is there the furnace is there and now we see king is telling them that i'm going to put you into the furnace if you don't bow down before my idol and they are not looking at what is happening in the outer world they are not concerned about what is happening in front of them instead they are telling this king hey hey listen to me listen to us you know what our god is able to save us and even if you not we are not going to bow down before your idol why 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 they could say like this what helped them to say like this it's the joy they had in their hearts for the lord amen hallelujah what i want to tell you is no matter what you're going through no matter what you, you have in front of you no matter how things are so tough in front of you no matter who loves you don't love you no matter what is broken in your in your life but if you have the joy of the lord if you have the spirit of rejoicing in you you are going to talk like shadrach meshach and abednego and you are going to tell people you know what i am poor i will serve god i don't have clothes i will serve god i don't have enough money i will love god i don't have anything i'll still go to church because i have the joy of the lord in my heart come on somebody hallelujah amen look at job the life of job is the greatest example he was joyful he was rejoicing when he had everything he was still joyful when everything was lost he didn't murmur he didn't complain he said he didn't say oh i didn't have this thing in my family i didn't have this thing in my house he didn't complain he said no god has given god has taken god's name be glorified i don't care about it i'm still joyful because i know the lord 
That's an attitude. Rejoicing is, a, is an attitude. Being joyful is an attitude, people of God. Don't be happy. Don't go for happiness. You're eating good food, that's happiness. You're eating your favorite food, it's happiness. You're eating your Chinese or Italian cuisine, it's a happiness. You're eating your favorite biryani, it's a happiness. You're wearing your good clothes, it's a happiness. You have your friend talking to you, it's a happiness. But joy is long lasting. Joy is very different than happiness. Joy has nothing to do with what you're wearing today. Joy has nothing to do with what you're eating today. Joy has nothing to do with what you have in your pocket today. You have no rupee, but you will be joyful. You have no good clothes, but you will be joyful. You have nobody, but you will be joyful. You have no friends, but you will be joyful. The moment you know the power of joy, you don't need anything from the world. Come on, somebody, help me preaching. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody here. I know that. Somebody say, God, you're talking to me. You know why, why Christians are struggling today? They shift their mode from being joyful to being happy. They were joyful when they didn't have anything. They had only God. They loved God. They prayed for hours. They were available for God. And they had nothing in their life. No good clothes maybe. Nothing to eat maybe. Nothing to boast about. Nothing to be proud about. But they were, they were joyful. But you know what? When they went into the world, they saw rich people. They saw people with good clothes, with, 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 with costly watches, with costly cars. And now they want to be like them. They want to. You know, look at this. This happiness in the world with good clothes, with expensive watches, with expensive perfumes, with expensive purses, this is all happiness. When they don't have it, they, they are not happy. When they don't have it, they will not smile. But you are still smiling when you don't have any branded thing in your life. Why? Your brand is Jesus Christ. The most expensive thing you have in your life is Jesus Christ. Come on, am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. Amen. That's the attitude. That's an attitude, people of God. I gave everything to God. I was the most joyful person in my life when I had nothing in my life. And even when God blessed me today, I'm still joyful. Not because what I have. It's because the maturity I have in Christ now. Oh, you missed it, what I said. After walking 10 years, 15 years with the Lord, I am not boasting about what I have, the clothes, the car, the facility, the comfortable life. No, I don't care about it. Even God takes everything, I don't care about it. The thing that I'm joyful about is that, Lord, I am mature. I love you more. I understand you more. I understand you better. What I was 10 years ago, I am much better now. I know you better now. I am boasting about my relationship with Christ, and I am so joyful about the kind of relationship I have with you, Master. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Oh, this is so powerful. This is very powerful. Please, don't shift your mind from being joyful to being happy. If you go after the things of the world, Jesus said, John says in his word, I think 1 John 2, 15, if you love the world and the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Clear, period. Once again, if you love the world, what is loving the world? The pattern of the world. If you want to be happy like world, you got to lie like them. They're liars sometimes. If you, got to, if you want to be happy like the world, you got to be, maybe you need to be corrupted. There are corruption in the world. If you want to be happy in the world, you maybe go back and live your sin again. Because there are sinners in the world, they don't know God. If you want to be happy like the world, maybe you got to again mess up your life and live your self-righteousness because that's what they practice, the self-righteousness. After doing everything, they will offer something to God. And they think this offering is going to 
forgive my sins. No, it doesn't work that way. I am not able to forgive myself. I am not able to come out of my sin. And that is why Jesus had to come and pay the price. Be careful, people of God, all the Christians, be careful. Don't go in the world, I want good clothes. Very good, God will give it to you in his season. You want something good, God will give it to you. God will give you every blessing in his time. In, in his time, in his season. You know why? Because that, by that time, you will be matured. By that time, you will be matured enough to handle that. You will not love the blessing, but you will love the blessed one. You missed it. You will not love your car. Oh, what a beautiful car I have. But you will love the, the one who gave you that car. And before that maturity, if you get it, you will spoil your life. So many Christians, spirit-filled Christians, so many ministers, so many people, they are running behind the happiness today. And they have forgotten the joy in their hearts. That's why I told you one Sunday, I have seen joyful poor Christians and sad rich Christians. Oh, come on. Hello? I have seen poor rejoicing Christians and I have also seen the saddest rich Christians. Why? Because somebody understood what joy is and somebody chasing happiness. Come on. Are you listening? Now, what do you want to chase? I'll tell you something. When people come for prayer meetings, when people come for fasting, why people fast? Why people pray? Why they come to church? Why they chase for holiness? Why they say, oh, I, I have to be holy. Oh, no, I don't have to look anything bad. I don't have to talk anything bad. I don't have to use any, any bad website. I, my eyes should be holy. My life should be holy. My mouth should be holy. My tongue should be holy. Why they are doing this? Why they, are, why they are running behind the prayer life? Why they are running behind the word? Why they are running behind anything that, Lord, help me, help me, Lord, what I want? You know why? Because they have understood the secret of the word of God. And the secret is rejoice. And again, I say rejoice in the Lord because the real joy comes from being holy, not being worldly. Somebody said like this. <laughs> You missed it, what I said. Because, you missed it, the real joy comes from being holy, not being worldly. Now, so friends in, in, in the world, your own friends, your Insta friends, your Facebook friends, they are running behind the happiness instead, whereas you are running behind the joy. And these two are a different avenue. A very different path. And they don't understand what joy means. Because joy has nothing to do with what you have and what you don't have. You have nothing to it, you will praise God. You are beaten and bleeding, you will praise God. You have no good clothes, you will praise God. And you will shock your enemies and your mockers. And they are like confused. I don't understand. He doesn't have a car, she doesn't have good clothes, and uh, they are living a poor life, but how come they have a smile on their face? Come on, somebody. You missed it. Are you listening? Are you listening? Oh, very powerful thing I'm talking to you today. Christians are losing that. Never ever go behind the luxury. That's why Jesus said, Matthew 6, 33, what is it? First, seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What does that mean? The Lord is saying, oh, wow, that is a powerful revelation. Listen, 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 listen. Seek first his kingdom and righteousness. Means what? Seek first the kingdom, rejoicing in the kingdom. Righteousness, joyful, rejoice. So seek first the joy. What is joy? Kingdom and righteousness. And then all these things, what is all these things? All this happiness 
will follow you. Hello? Are you still in English service? Are you here? Are you getting English? When you're sitting in English service, you must understand English. Are you getting? So Jesus said, you seek joy. And what is joy? The kingdom and righteousness and all these things. What is all these things? The things in the world. Your car, your house, your clothes, your food, your biryani will follow you. So you chase joy and happiness will come after you. Oh, come on. Now, oh, are you listening? Is it making sense? So who is joy? God is my joy. Who is joy? Being holy is my joy. Who is joy? Reading the word is my joy. What is joy? Oh, going to the fellowship is my joy. Coming to church is a joy. Oh, having fellowship with my, with my fellow believers is a joy. So once I am joyful, happiness means what I want will come after me. Are you getting? But what people are doing, they are turning their face and they're going after the happiness. I need, I need happiness. I want clothes. No, 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 I'm done. I serve God 10 years. I don't have good clothes. See, my clothes are turned out. I serve the Lord for 15 years. See, I don't have anything in my house. I'll go back and find those happiness. You're going back, finding the happiness, but losing the joy. No prayer. No relationship with God. No heart for the ministry. No joy in prayer. How many of you are understanding? How many of you are getting what I'm saying? Don't chase happiness. Start running behind the joy again. Amen. I hope you got my point. If you don't understand it, you can come or you can talk to somebody. Maybe Supneet will help you to understand what I mean to say. I'm telling you, I'm suggesting you, I may do it myself. Go back in this week and listen this sermon again. It's available on YouTube. Listen it again. Practice it. Confess it. You will have a very different life in this week onwards, I'm telling you. Now, another thing I, I said, rejoicing in God's presence. Rejoicing in God's presence. That's very important. I'm happy. I'm rejoicing. I'm sorry. I'm joyful because I'm living in the presence of God. I'm in the church. I'm in the presence of God. Number four, rejoicing in God's promises. I don't know how many people have promised something to you and how many promises are broken. Normally, husband and wife, they also make promises and they break their promises. People in the world, they make promises, they break the promises. Some people say promises are made to be broken. Hello? Promises are made to be broken. But Jesus, he never promised something that he cannot fulfill. That's why the Bible says we have a covenant-keeping, a promise-keeping God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob, he never lies. Come on, somebody. So when God is promising something, when you read the Bible, when you read the word of God, you need full assurance. You have full faith that whatever it says, how many promises I'm reading right now, everything is going to be filled in yes and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. I may not have much time, so I will finish this topic today because next week I want to pick at a different topic. But listen to this one. Now, the power of rejoicing. The second title is the power of rejoicing in the midst of trials. I see so many people are writing today. Very good. Good job. Yeah. So what I mean is contrary to what I said, right? So many people are making notes. So the power of rejoicing in the midst of trials. I'll just give you the, uh, what is called, the Bible verses, and you can go home and read. Now listen, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Go home and read that, but maybe I'll read it for you. Though the fig tree should not blossom, not, uh, not fruit be on the vine, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. 
yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take the joy in the God of my salvation. But that's, that's, what does that mean? It means rejoicing in difficult times serves as a powerful testimony to the world. Hello? Rejoicing in difficult times, rejoicing in the times when situations are not in your favor, when you have a tough time in your life, it serves as a powerful testimony in the world. What does that mean? It means when people see you, when your relatives, your friends see you, they, they know what you're going through. They know you have some problem in your life, but they don't understand why you are so joyful. They don't understand why you're smiling. They don't understand how come this faith and hope you have in your heart. And the reason of our faith and hope is Jesus Christ, is our Lord. We are, we are so happy, we are so joyful because we have our Lord. So what, what I want to tell you is, joy is a testimony. Joy is a testimony into the world, number one. Number two, joy strengthens our faith. Number two, joy strengthens our faith. Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says like this, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Somebody say like this. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So joy strengthens your faith. When you're joyful, you are faith. You're having, you are having faith, I'm sorry. You have faith and you say, Lord, I know you will, you will do it. Lord, I have hope. I know you will do it. Sad Christians, they don't have any joy. They don't have any faith. Why you're sad? Because you don't trust God. Why are you sad? Because you have no faith available in your life. So what I want to tell you, joyful people, listen to this one, joyful people, they have faith in their life. When we rejoice, we are strengthened, joy renews our spirit, blusters our faith, and gives us the resilience to endure trials. It gives us the power to go through the trials, to endure the trials, to endure the problems that we're facing in our life. Let's maintain the spirit of joy in our hearts. You see, Paul and Silas, I told you, Paul and Silas, they were in jail, beaten, bleeding. What they were doing there? Murmuring and complaining to God? No, Bible says they were singing hymns to the Lord. In the middle of the night, bleeding, beaten, put into the jail. They must be complaining God. They must be murmuring and telling God, what are you doing? But instead of all this, what they were doing? They were singing hymns to the Lord. How come they're singing hymns? How come you're bleeding, bruised, broken, beaten? How come your lips will sing praises to God? It's because the attitude I'm talking about over and over. It's because the spirit you have. It's because the attitude of joy, the attitude of rejoicing in the Lord, knowing the biggest thing, knowing the biggest joy is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Next one, third one. Joy leads to peace. Joy leads to peace. You can go home, read Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything. Say, I'm not going to be anxious about anything. Uh, it's tough to say now. How can you practice that? Come on, be louder. I'm not going to be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Wow. What I, what I want to tell you, joy leads you to peace. How come this godly Christians don't have anything good in their life, but they're still at peace? They don't feel any, anything bad. No clothes, no problem. No money, no problem. I'm going through problems, situations. I have issues in my life, no problem. I have peace. 
How come this peace is very in their life? It's because they know the, they know the joy. They know Jesus. They know hope. They have faith that God is with me and God is doing for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many got it?